Hey everyone, this is Mason. Just a quick shout out and a huge thank you to all of our Herb Rally Schoolhouse members. Your support is so appreciated and it helps us keep the lights on, as they say, here at both Herb Rally and the podcast. If you'd like to support our podcast by becoming a member of the Herb Rally Schoolhouse, you can do so for only $10 per month. You can try your first 30 days for free with coupon code podcast at checkout. And you can learn more and register at herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. And in addition, members get access to exclusive videos, classes, audio and monographs, a private Facebook group, discounts to herbal companies, and more. So one more time, learn more at herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. And don't forget to use the coupon code podcast at checkout to get your first 30 days for free. One more time, a huge thanks to all of our Herb Rally Schoolhouse members. Now on to the show. Enjoy. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into the show. The content in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to cure, diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. This information has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. We are not doctors, nor do we play one on the internet. Please seek advice from a qualified healthcare professional. Okay, MC Calico, take it away. Yeah. Smoky herbal blends. We need some mullin and some kush, my brethren. While listening to Herb Rally Podcast again. Herbalism at its finest with Mason Hutchinson. Yeah. You know, ac- across the country, the weather's been temperamental, you know, things happening in all kinds of spaces and places. They had hell in Atlanta the other night, Sunday night. It was big as golf balls. Yeah. One wow. of my girlfriends said. Um, so, you know, if, if certain people would stop fooling around with weather satellites and the harp and doing all kinds of things, playing around with the weather, Mother Nature, she's, she's not taken too kindly to uh, human intervention when it comes to you know nature so yeah. uh things are getting crazy out there yeah 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 i am uh uh coming into a place of uh you know what happened in nashville yesterday i mean just i don't know mason what are we what are we gonna do as a race of of humans what are we gonna do what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? It just makes me so sad. Yeah, I know. It's it's uh when I was younger in my early twenties, I used to think that I had a lot more uh, ambition to change the world on the way everybody sees things, and and I don't think I, that left me. But I think I I started evolving more to I'm just gonna try to take care of my little corner of the world and just do my best and evolve and grow as a human and you know hopefully die peacefully and with no regrets so yeah i yeah. i said that the other day to someone i want to die empty yeah right cuz when i come back i'm going to have a full vessel of you know i'm going to have other things to that i'm i have to do so i want to make sure that this lifetime um my tank gets emptied yeah. um and i too echo the same sentiment um I'm such an uh, 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 empathetic, Mm. you know, so, so tragedy hits me really hard in any aspect. And um, so over the years, over the years, I've really learned how to kind of channel, channel it so, so that it doesn't hurt me at you know, to the point where I just become immobilized. Mm -hmm. Um, and I stay focused on my work. Um, I think I think we all have a journey that we've come to the planet to do. And once we realize, you know, what that pathway looks like, um, how it affects affects and infects other humans, we have to really work at aspiring to be in alignment with our greatest and highest self. And I think that energy alone will resonate i still say there's more love in the world i still say that even you know with all the crazy stuff that goes on i still stand on the side of humans are still good at their core that you know what i mean that i still err on the side of of the best 
the best. I, I want to stay in that space. I, I just want to stay in that space. So I focus on my work. My work really helps to channel channel that energy. So I hear you Amen. on that. Amen. Well, I'm very glad I hit record because technically we didn't start yet, but we're going oh. to get we're going to get rolling if you want to get rolling. You, you were dropping knowledge right there and I loved it. So <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for joining me on the Herbalist Hour. Uh, I, I was going to call you Angelique Sabande Greer, but it looks like you're going by Aya now. Is that true? Well, it's Ia. I, Ia. I, okay. I, I, that's that's just a that's just a, a a title. I've been a I've been a I've been a priestess for years. Um, uh, so that's that's just the title. You can so, you can call me what you want. Just, okay. <laughs> just make sure it's positive. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> so Ia is a title then. Yes, Ia okay. is a is a title. It's a it's um it's a title for a priestess. I love it. Well, very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'll we'll, I'll be calling you Sabande. Yes, that would be great. All right, <laughs> very good. Well, uh, as I said, thank you for joining the show, uh, Sabande. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm glad I pushed record because yeah, we immediately just started getting right into it and <laughs> uh, hearing the inspirational and positive words. So, uh, of course, I've known you via email and the internet for years now. But as we were talking about just before I hit record, you know, we've uh, we've been playing uh, tag, trying to like talk to each other for a bit here now. And uh, I'm glad that we finally get to have a conversation and get to know you a little bit better. So I'm kind of curious, how did you get involved in the world of herbalism? Well, I, I should say herbalism got involved in me. <laughs> uh, I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky. Let's 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 start there. Sure. Originally from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and uh, my great grandmother was my primary educator. Uh, into the into the initiation of uh, of the plant world um, when I didn't even know it. Um, I spent uh, a lot of time with my great grandparents. Um, uh, my great grandmother, um, of course, didn't call herself a healer or herbalist or she didn't call herself any of those things. She just knew what she knew what she knew. Yeah. And uh, without uh, um, uh, without a uh, formal, you know, uh, education. I don't, I, I don't believe that granny even graduated. I never heard her say that she graduated. I believe she may have gotten to sixth or seventh grade, maybe. Wow. Right. Wow. But um, uh, my granny was really knowledgeable about the world and um, she had a green thumb and um I spent like my spring breaks and my summers and it was the vacation Bible schools and it was the getting on the Greyhound buses and going, you know, from one church to another. And, um, you know, the, it was the little, it was the little things, you know, that I was, you know, doing with my granny. And, and when I look back, Mason, most of it came through the art of storytelling. Now she was making things. Um, but as a child, I just thought, Granny was just a little eccentric. Granny was just <laughs> a little weird, you know. Yeah. Um, but she always talked about plants. Uh, her 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 medicine was in her storytelling, and you know, uh, for the African American community, our healing traditions are based in our oral stories. Um, it's only recent that we're finding more and more uh, things written. Um, you know that are coming to the forefront uh you know of of african americans and their and our history here in the west when it comes to plant medicine but you know it, but if you do some deep diving you'll know that you know uh our history has been here since since the first slave arrived um you know here in north america so uh, a lot of her plant medicine stories um you know came to me orally and um, she learned them from her great grandmother, who was an herbalist as well, and a slave on a plantation uh, somewhere in Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, her name was Ida May Cox. And um, the story goes that um, she married another slave forcibly. They, she was forcibly married to another slave by the name of Peter Cox, who was Cherokee and also an herbalist medicine person. And when they put the two of them together, they had a great powerhouse team. <laughs> and this team was the team that was doing all of the medicine work, 
you know, for the for the sick slave slaves, for the plantation owners, children, and they were taking them. But between the Kentucky, Ohio area um, to other plantations and, you know, utilizing their services to help heal, you know, help, help heal people. And so, um, yeah, she learned she learned. Uh, the art of that from her great grandmother, and then here I came five generations later um, <laughs> into the family. Um, and um, as a child, like like I said, I just thought she was weird. I just thought she was just really <laughs> weird. When the seasons would change, Mason, she'd always have uh, my gosh, cod liver oil. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, she had me swallow a uh, swallow copper pennies. That's when penny, pennies were real really made of copper oh, wow. um and it was what i realized years later it was that was a, a vitamin source you know she was giving me a vitamin source yeah. real copper wow. um and then the cod liver oil would help you to get the penny out on the <laughs> other end where a granny would keep this bucket beside the <laughs> toilet yeah. <laughs> and and she would tell you, don't flush the toilet, don't or commode. She call it a commode. Okay. Don't don't flush the commode because she wanted to go in and find the penny. But what she was really doing, she was kind of seeing if you had parasites, if you, you know, just she was she was a trove of knowledge, yeah. you know, a trove of knowledge and and um, um, deep seated wealth. And um, I got away from that, of course. Of mm -hmm. course you do. You get away from that as a kid. And um, it wasn't until years later, um, I left and went to Europe and I was living in Amsterdam. This was in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a uh, uh, landlord uh, who was an elderly lady. Uh, she was Dutch. She spoke very little English. And in order to get to my apartment, I had to go through her hallway. So one spring, I'm, I'm, I'm trucking, I'm, I'm coming home, I'm trucking through the hallway and she comes out and she takes my hand and she rubs my hand and she looks into my face and what she was doing was iridology. But this is the 80s, this is the late 80s. I had no clue what iridology was. I had no clue about holistic health sciences. I was, you know, I, I was blind to all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, what she said to me in Dutch was, you don't look so well. <laughs> and she was right. I yeah. didn't, I didn't feel well. I had, I was, I felt like what I was battling was uh, the flu in the springtime. And you know how that feels in your bones. You know, my joints were really achy. And, and what the, the mistake that I made Mason was that several weeks before I called back home, this before cell phones. So I actually made a landline call to my parents and talked to my mom, which you should never do when you're on the other side of the world <laughs> and you're 17. Um, <laughs> uh, I told my mama, I don't feel well. You know, I think I may have the cold. My mom's first reaction was, um, go find an American doctor, right? Yeah. And, you know, I'm 17, 18. I'm just like, yeah, mom, I didn't do any of that, right? <laughs> I didn't follow her instruction. And so um, uh, the landlord took me out back. She grabbed a basket. She took me out back. And it was, you know, again, it was springtime. And she began to pluck these flowers. And it was at that moment, Mason, that I realized that I was having a light bulb blessing moment mm -hmm. here i was on the other side of the world with this old dutch woman who didn't speak very much english and she was plucking the same plants and flowers that my granny connected me to when i was little wow you know? yeah I, yeah it gives me chills every time i say it i'm getting goosebumps too every time i say it because <laughs> You know, I believe the universe gives us lots of opportunity and it knocks on our, our door, our head, our heart. We never pay attention. Yeah. We're so, you know, humans are so busy. Mm -hmm. So to have the way with all at, at, you know, at that age to connect that at that moment, I told myself, I don't know when I'm going back, but when I get back. I've got to go home and and really sit with my granny and really learn 
Um, she had once told me, Mason, she said, it's not my job as an elder to teach you anything. It's your job to come and ask me for what you want. <laughs> That's yeah? pretty wise. That's pretty wise. Yeah. And she also said that if I die and you don't ask the questions, right? It'll be as if a great library has been burned. And I was like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> like, she didn't have the education, right? right? So to call herself a great library was was just profound to me. And so um, eight years later, I returned after Desert Storm. Uh, I stayed uh, uh, another year. I returned uh, in the early 90s. And um, I uh, was here in, in Tennessee and uh, it, uh, Louisville and uh, between Louisville and Nashville is like a three hour drive. And so I would go back and forth home. And um, uh, at that time, uh, she was probably in her uh, probably in her early 70s, probably. And um, uh, I would just begin to spend those weekends with her. Now, I also thought, too, Mason, you know, I'm going home. This is going to be clinical. OK, <laughs> uh, I went home with my journal and my pen. <laughs> And I was ready to take these notes. And and she was just like, <laughs> I know what you're doing with that journal and that pen. Was her sentiment. <laughs> because what I have to give you, child, is going to come from my heart. And it has to come into your heart. Not into your head, but into your heart. Like what I've got to teach you, you can't, this, you can write it down at some other point, but you're going to have to get it here. Yeah. Or it'll just be information. Right. So I spent the next um, probably seven or eight years. Um, no, it was a little longer than that. Yeah, a little longer than that, uh, because she began to go into the stages, early stages of dementia. Mm. And um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's my that's my foundation. And let me let me go back a minute while I was in well, while, while I was living overseas, while I was in Europe. Um, you know, of course, no, no cell phones were going on then, no internet. And so after this epiphany mo moment with my landlord, I went to the library and I, cause I was like, I've got a, I've got a, I've got to get some books, mm -hmm. right? I've got a, like, what is this, what is this plant thing, right? I've got to get some books. The two books that were there that were only in English. You ready for them? Let's hear it. Back to Eden. Uh-huh. <laughs> And Rosemary Gladstar. All right. <laughs> so when it comes to my um, granny was my foundation, but when it comes to my um, formal, you know, book literary education, those two books were pivotal. They were pivotal in my in my journey. Um, and that just opened up. It just opened up so, so much more. Wow, what a story. Um, sometimes I feel like I, I get a little jealous of people who have that lineage of like, oh, my my great grandma was an herbalist and her great grandma was an herbalist or whatever. But we all have our own life's paths. And um, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's it's really cool to hear that that was your your upbringing. And I'm also very thankful that you ended up getting, you know, uh, humble enough to to go sit with your great grandma and, and learn from her. Yeah. When she passed away, uh, Mason, I had um, I had three daughters and she was here for the last child, which uh, Zola came in 2001 and she uh, passed shortly thereafter. Um, she made me make three promises. One, this was early on. One, uh, teach your children like whatever you're you know, magic is teach your children to never let your um, never let the machines do that work that your hands are supposed to do. Mm, I like that. Yeah. And three, whatever you do, I don't care who it is you think you're going to become, whatever profession, passion, do it with love, do it from a space of love do it from a space of compassion. Um, and she started that with simply being in the kitchen and cooking. If you're, if you don't feel well, if your attitude is jacked up, 
If you had a bad day, somebody pissed you off, don't go into the kitchen and attempt to make food because you transmit that energy. She didn't call it energy, but she, you know, now I, you know, I can translate that. What she was saying is don't get out of the funk, get Mm -hmm. back in alignment, right? Come back to center and then go forth in love because everything that you produce, everything that you put your hands on, everything that you spew from your mouth if someone is receiving that, you want them to receive that in the most beneficial healing way. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in a space of that for yourself in alignment for yourself, then how are you going to give that to someone else? And so um, those are her three promises. And I, I, I really keep those. I, I, it, it keeps me steady and stable. Just a quick break from the show to let you know about the Herb Rally events page. Did you know that we add new herbalism events from all over the United States and the world for that matter on an almost daily basis? You can peruse herbalism events at herbrally.com slash events and hopefully find something in your neck of the woods. You can also search by state to make it even easier to find a plant walk, conference, or class near you. And we also list virtual herbalism events as well. Check those out at herbrally.com slash virtual. And again, for the in-person events, go to herbrally.com slash events. All right, back to the show. I love that. Uh, yeah. would, would your mom and grandma remember your great-grandma as this, like, badass, wise lady? Or do you think they'd have kind of different memories of her? They had, you know what? That's a great question because I'm the only one in the family. <laughs> the only one in the family that knows her in this way. Yeah. Interesting. Not even, not even my grandmother, right? Um, my mom. Nobody knows her in this way, and I'm just like, well, was Granny shape shifting just for me? <laughs> but what I realized, what I realized is that um, we all have, you know, it's like being a child of sibling, and you have siblings. Um, each child has experienced their parents at a different phase of their parents' life. Like we have three daughters, 30, 26, and 22. Each one of those children have experienced Sabande at a different stage of my development, growth, and motherhood. So while they have some things, they've grown up in the house together, right? It's it, And that kind of is a testimony to why kids in the same house can grow up together. And one can be just Billy Badass and the other is like, where did you come from? Right? Um, because they've experienced their parents at a different stage of their life. And, and I think I was just, I just happened to be, I am the oldest grandchild on both sides of my family. So I think, I think I just... I think I just got the blessing of experiencing my grand, my, my great grandmother at a different stage in her life. Um, uh, to be black, to be in the South and to be a woman is a heavy load and a he- heavy cross to bear. And um, she did it with such grace and such style and um, tenacity. Um, there was an inner strength that she had and um, her knowledge is, it, it's nothing that I've ever come across ever in all the study I've had since. As a matter of fact, when I would come back to her with book knowledge, she would say, if you're gonna talk to me about something you read or found out, I don't wanna hear it. Cause I told you that, or, right. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just like, okay, granny, I'm no more, no more, no <laughs> more books, no more discussing what I read in the book for you. <laughs> uh, what was her name? Dorothy Louise Greenwade. All right. Shout out to Dorothy. Yes. Uh, yes. Did, she, did she get to see you become an herbalist? She did not. Okay. Um, uh, she knew that I had a store, um, which was the first thing that, that, that actually happened for me. Um, when I got back to the States, I, um, I opened up an, an, uh, the first, the city's first herbal, this in, in the early nineties, uh, yeah, the first, wow. the city's first herb shop, uh, was Botanica. Uh, we had a two seat, uh, vegan lunch counter, you know, or a vegetarian vegan. This was, you know, we're talking Tennessee yeah, so in the nineties <laughs> in black. <Yeah>. So, 
you know, I was just doing Talk about all eccentric. Kind of, yeah, I was doing all kinds <laughs> of things that were that were out of the box. Yeah. Um, so she knew about that. She never got to see it because by by that time she was in a um, assisted living facility. And um, like I said, it was just like the early stages of her dementia. Um, and um, yeah, but I do know Mason and I have experienced um, definitely through dreams and, and just through the work that she's always with me, right? And um, I do know that I've become all of her tangible possibilities. You know, all the things that, that she could not do as a as an African American woman, mm. uh, I've become those tangible possibilities, and so uh, I stand on the shoulders of some mighty, mighty ancestors, and um, collectively, you know. And so um, uh, she's definitely gone from the body, but she's always she's always here. She's always present. Always present. I love that. Have you used that term before, um, the tangible possibilities before? Because I love that. Um, I've probably used it somewhere uh, yeah. in my, you know, in my writing. Um, and, I, you know, I believe it. I believe I, I believe that came from her. I believe okay, that, okay. you know, that phrase came from her. Um, you know, every generation looks forward to the next generation being better and having mm -hmm. better and overcoming some things. And um, um I knew she wanted that. I knew she wanted that for me. I don't know what she thought it looked like. Mm -hmm. um, she never, she never, she never poured her dreams, her dreams into me, but she did. Yeah. And um, I, I think it was subtle. I think it was, you know, definitely on a cosmic and spiritual level. I think she did it uh, um, uh, through just the things that she talk to me about you know what I mean those were her tangible possibilities and um I really had to just find a place when I found my path to uncover it uh and call it you know and manifest it in that way so yeah uh when they say we are the dreams of our ancestors mm. I definitely am I definitely am so it's a deep bow of gratitude to her um for all the magic yeah, she yeah. gave me a, she gave me a lot of magic. I love that, and uh, I'm sure she's extremely proud of you. And uh, you really are carrying forth her legacy. And I I kind of feel like Dorothy Dorothy's a part of this show today. So <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I love that. Um, I'm I'm curious. Uh, so when you said you started your herb shop, Botanica, that was in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, actually, right outside of Nashville, a place Is that called Buchanan? Clark uh, Clarksville. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to talk about Sacred Waters Retreat, which is, is in Buchanan, I believe. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I'm not too familiar with the geography of Tennessee, but uh, uh, yeah, just trying to get things straight. But I, I was curious how you went from uh, doing the herb shop to uh, starting NCB uh, Herb School. Yeah. Uh, well, here we go. Ancestors again. <laughs> okay. So um, I opened that. Uh, I actually started off uh, in uh, 1990 with a catalog herb business. And um, uh, that flowed over to opening this herb shop in nine in ninety two, and I ran that store till ninety nine. Mm -hmm. We had a tornado that came through here in ninety nine. My store was downtown. Um, it was the only black uh, owned woman owned um, store. Uh, you know in that, you know, in that, in that geographical area, uh, which had been exclusively in, you know, uh, you know, white owned, it was his, you know, it was just, it's like most, it's, it's like most cities uh, and their historic downtown. Mm -hmm. And um, the tornado came through one night and the next morning we were getting calls that, you know, the city had been hit. Um, Clarksville is the home of Austin Peay State University um and uh, my store was about uh, two blocks from the university and it annihilated my business like you know it it looked like a person just came in and just a giant just stepped on it wow um a lot of amazing things came out of that though um uh so here's the testimony so i carry 300 and about 383 uh 
herbs, bulk herbs in glass, you know, glass jars on glass shelves. Oh. Would you believe that not a single glass shelf or herb jar was cracked, broken, or damaged? I was already picturing the devastation. Wow, that's nuts. Everything else around it, yeah. but those glass shelves wow. and those glass jars survived. I was like, mm. that's crazy. Yeah, gives me chills. But looking back on it, OMG. Um, I um spent all my savings opening that store. I didn't have a business loan. I didn't have a credit card for that. It was all my hard-earned money that opened that store. And, uh, you know, we didn't have the internet then. Um, uh, so uh, how can I explain it? I, I, I was insured, but I, ha I was with a local insurance company within the city. Would you believe that my policy didn't have water? or wind damage coverage wow. oh no so for a store that uh that i you know uh, i i put in you know an excess more than 400 grand i got back like twenty six thousand mm. dollars you know and um um at the time i was already teaching so the i had it, it the store was only about 600 square feet, but it had three major rooms. The front part was the botanica where all the herbs had my lunch counter. Um, I was doing uh, uh, bulk stuff like uh, turbinado sugar and, and you know, things that just people were just not accustomed to having at that time in the early 90s. Sure. And then the middle room uh, was like a, a little gift shop. And then the third room was a classroom. So I was already doing some teaching. I was teaching um, uh, women's health uh, through, uh, 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 what do they call it? Distance learning at like Austin P State and, and some local colleges. I was, you know, doing some, doing some small classes with women's health. Uh, and so when the tornado happened, um, I thought to myself, you know what? I really liked, I, I like teaching. I like teaching and I know I'm not out of this herb game. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, and, and the old adage where a window, uh, where a door closes, a window opens or vice mm -hmm. versa. Mm -hmm. I knew that was my, that was my moment. So um, I decided I was going to, I wanted to teach full time. And I thought, well, it's been really difficult for me Um you know, outside of my granny, I didn't have any other formative or formal training, mm -hmm. right? Everything I had had been downloaded, plus my two books, Rosemary Gladstone <laughs> and, and um, Back to Eden by Jethro Kloss, right? Which are like, I call that my herbal Bible. Yeah, sure. And um, um, so I uh, I said, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna open up a school, and it was right around the time the internet was just getting started, right? It, like it was dial up, you were AOL, <laughs> you know. Um, and um, uh, I decided I was gonna, you know, continue to teach live and in person classes, and then put this entity on 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 this called, you know, this internet mm -hmm. thing. And um, yeah, uh, of course it took, it took years, it took years for the, for me, for the internet to really catch hold for the school. Mm. But I kept plugging at it as far as teaching and traveling. And, you know, I, I started conducting um, classes at, in my home, in my kitchen, and my backyard and um, small retreats, you know, began to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, the granny's vision yeah, Granny's vision just got it got bigger. It just got bigger. And um I could no longer um really contain it. It just it, it grew its own wings. It really did. You seem like someone with almost infant creative energy. I feel like that. Um 
I feel like that when I look back at my young self, I I think I've always been um, very creative. I've I've always I went to a performing arts school um, uh, for vocal music. Wow. Um, I was in a I was in a I was in a band in Europe, <laughs> you know, that toured. Uh, you know, we opened for people like Millie Vanilli. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm, yeah, I've got I've got some stories, man. I got some stories. So, you know, I'm not just an herbalist, but yeah, I, I think I've always that creative spark yeah. for me yeah. um has always been there and um just finding narrowing that down and and um knowing that this is my path has been the most enlightening part of that. And uh, I think we all we all come to the planet with our gifts. We just really have to work at listening to what, we gotta get quiet. We got so much chatter going on in our heads that we don't get the opportunity to just get quiet, to listen to what, you know, how the gifts show up and how what's the consistent pattern of what's going on in your life. Maybe that's your gift. You know, I, could, so. I couldn't agree more. When I was a kid, I also feel like I have uh, infinite creative uh, energy where I was always drawing and, and doing some sort of art, this or that. And then, you know, I hit my early teens and throughout my teenage years and then like, this like depression kind of sets mm-hmm. in and I start feeling sad and and all this other stuff. And um, I feel like all of the creativity just got zapped from me. But then once I started kind of discovering like uh, the healing power of plants and and nutrition and uh, and yes, meditating and getting quiet. I feel like in my late teens, early twenties, I started finally being being able to listen to my heart again. And then and then all of a sudden, just kind of, kind of whooshes back. And and then uh, now I feel like I'm very heart led. And that's why I could just continue to expand on Herb Rally and the projects within it because I just feel like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun to continuously create. And uh, yeah, I, th- I think I think you're right. I think it stems from quieting uh and listening to your internal like what your heart is telling you to do yeah it's a it could be a journey uh you know that's a real it's a real deep journey um and the process can be um it brings up a lot of uh things it brings up grief it brings up trauma it brings up you know it it, that process but i think the journey of uh, uncovering self is that's that i think that's our purpose I think that's our real purpose, uh, um, uh, because once we can understand who we are, uh, we can co-create community collectively. Love that, right? We can co-create it, and um, that goes beyond gender. That goes beyond race and culture. You know, that goes beyond those things. But that it has to start here. You can't just pull at straws from the outside and expect that to. Um, fill you. You have to fill your vessel from the inside and understand it. You know, pour out the stuff you don't need, and then start. You know, start from scratch. Understand who you are, and then pour into the things. You know, pour the things into you that you that you need to make you a better human. I, I think it's really all of our journeys. Um, I think it's just about really getting to a level where we can grasp it and and understand it. And so, um, even I, I'll be fifty four this year, and I'm you know I'm I'm doing it on a different level at this point. This is probably the fifties have been such an amazing transformational time um, in my life and in my heart space. Um, I've got more years behind me than I have in front of me, but like I told you early, I'm gonna die on empty. Yeah, I love that. Um, well, as you were uh, discussing your, the evolution of the store to the uh, school, you did mention in passing that you had been hosting these retreats uh, and you got that beautiful logo behind you. I wanted to talk a bit about uh, some of your retreats, not just Sacred Waters Retreat, but definitely want to kind of dive into uh, into the retreat realm. Um. Well, let's see. Mm. Uh, these, these events, these, uh, collective gatherings, uh, came out of, uh, my own personal need, my own personal journey, um, being in the field of herbalism, uh, for me, you know, 30 years of active participation in the field of herbalism has been a lonely journey. Uh, one, because, uh, I was not always welcome in spaces and places, um, just being a black woman. Um, my knowledge was not always uh, 
acceptable mm. uh, because I didn't have the degree. Uh, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got a bachelor's degree. You know, I've, I've, I've got, I've got undergrad degrees and, you know, you know, university degrees, but I didn't have anything to tout mm-hmm. in the world of herbalism. And, um, it often, um, got me the stares and the, you know, the, all of the passive aggressive energy that the West, um, has poured, uh, into marginalized people and marginalized, uh, communities. And um, the world of herbalism was no different. Um, I came with high expectations and would often leave very disappointed. Um, mm, I'm going to say this <laughs> because it came it, it came full circle to me. I can remember in the in the 80s. No, no, no. In the 80s. Yeah, no, I can remember in the early 90s reaching out to um uh the american herbal skill there were no people of color and i don't remember what i asked when i reached out right because i was like oh the american herbal skill i i was overseas i had just heard about it i was like i would love to be come a part of that right like i i've got some you know american herbal skill (laughs) my face tells it all right so, <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> i'm very disappointed <laughs> yeah and yeah. then you know uh years later like uh you know i don't know how long ago that was maybe six or seven years ago they send me this email and they're just like we want you to we want you to come and and teach and i was like what mm. oh that land yeah okay <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's been it's been that kind of trajectory uh, with these gatherings. Um, So my husband can tell you, I've, you know, early, early on, I would come home from gatherings and I would just be so depressed, Mm -hmm. you know. uh, Not seen, not being seen. um, Knowing that um, the information I had was worthy, but but the people that were g- gathering my information didn't f- didn't treat me worthy mm. and it broke my heart it broke my heart it made me angry um i didn't know what to do i didn't know where to turn um and um i didn't know if i had enough strength or power uh to do anything different. Mm -hmm. This is where granny's healing comes in. Um, So the day that I was downloaded with sacred waters, um, spirit just kind of said to me, it's time for you to, you're not the only one and it's time for you to gather people in marginalized communities, these women, because their stories are out here too. If you're feeling like this in these spaces and places, right, that you're going to give your history, your information, if you're feeling out in these spaces and places, what do you think other people are feeling like? What do you think other black and brown women are feeling like? And so um, uh, spirit was just like, you know what? Um, it's like field of dreams. It, if you If you build it, they will come. And um, Granny kind of stood in the gap of that, you know, mm. that 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 doubt, and you can do it. And um, sacred waters begin to evolve, you know, my ideas. I begin to write them down on paper, and then I had a moment. I got a phone call, and um, someone else in the area. Well, not really in the area. They, it was in the Carolinas where they were starting an an herb conference and they had heard that I was starting one too. (laughs) Now I'd never, I I didn't know this person. I didn't know. I had never heard of them, Mason. 
And um, I'll just say that the conversation was very one-sided. It was um, it was very aggressive. It was very, um, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? Um, we don't need another herb, herb conference in the area. You, you can filter your people to, you know, it was that type of uh, conversation. Just a quick question about that. Was the herb conference also like a person of color conference or no. was it just, just an herb conference? It was a white herb, a white herb conference. Wow. Okay. Continue. Yeah. I just had a, I was curious about that. And, um, that after that conversation, she hung up because it was the it was the founder who was calling me. She hung up. I was in tears. And about 10 minutes later, I got another call. From her mentor, whom I had heard of, but had never worked with, had never, you know, and her mentor. Decided she was going to tear me a new ass, so to say. And it was, it was, it was, it was disrespectful. It was, she cursed and she screamed and she yelled, you know, the same thing. Who do you think you are? My, my student is, you know, she's, and she hung up. And that, I allowed those two those two women in that incident to take me from the vision of sacred waters for six years. Oh, you just, you just, you're like, I, I had enough, the, the stress, the, the shit. Um, I don't know what they were trying yep. to do, but intimidation. I don't know. Or... Intimidation. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I had, I had, you know, uh, That's a I think long I'm, time. I think I'm pretty resilient, yeah. but that, that really, that really, that really pushed a thorn into my, side and um sacred water stayed on paper for six years wow and every year i went back to the drawing board of it and just could not manifest it right. i could not manifest it and it, it wasn't until that sixth year i decided to take my power back i decided to forgive myself and i decided to um say I'm enough. I'm enough. And I'm worthy. And what I have to give is, is um, so impactful. I just kind of, I just, I don't know, it just, it shifted. Year six, something happened for me. And it shifted. And I took all of that. I took all of that power back. Um, And um, it manifested. And it manifested so organically and and beautifully. Uh, and what I realized, Mason, is that 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 pause, that six year pause, was giving me time to build, rebuild um, myself, um, to kind of re- really kind of sit in my own confidence, to sit in um, what I knew was downloaded into my heart and my soul. And it also showed me that you can't go me talking to me mm-hmm. you can't move you you can't be like that you there you can't be like that you've received so much uh anger and and hate and just for simply being you yeah so you can't give that that's you you can never work from a space of that you know like in that energy so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to show them better than you can tell them <laughs> and and um oh my gosh all my spirits were with me they're yeah. with me and um yeah uh uh sacred waters begin to unfold uh along with sacred waters came uh the afrobotany conference um which was a col- uh, which is still it's a collective gathering a conversion of uh of of african people of the diaspora wherever they have uh landed their their ancestors as slaves so if it if it's the maroons of jamaica um if it's if it's the indigenous uh people of costa rica the bribri and the the you know the the africans that you know the african slaves that came to costa rica if it's the if it's the uh african slave descendants in cuba wherever they have landed there's medicine there and I wanted to collectively pull those stories together because, see, a lot of times 
uh, I think our community gets um, placed to the side because we don't have the books, because we don't tout the titles, because we don't go to the mainstream mainstream schools, right? So our our knowledge gets uh, thrown to the side as if it's just you know it, like it's fairy tale stuff, like it's not real, and um, we have so much. We have a deep, rich uh, history. Uh, our healing traditions are, are real. And, um, I was like, well, if, if, if I've got a story there, there's, what about other Afro descendants around the world? I know they have a story too. So the Afro botany, um, immersion conference came out of that. Um, and I had a beautiful, I had a beautiful co co-founder with that, uh, Rachel Thomas. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. She's an ethnobotanist. Um, she, uh, she owns, um, Hidden Gardens, uh, ethnobotanical sanctuary in Costa Rica. And, um, I met her, um, at the, uh, Medicines from the Edge, um, conference, um, years ago, maybe eight years ago, uh, I was there as a speaker and met her and, and, and I was doing herb slavery in America, which was like that, that, that whole, um, lecture was so new for the herbal community, right? When you hear herb slavery in America, you're like, mm. I'm not sure if I really want to bring this person here. Are they going to are they going to upset the the <laughs> waters of mainstream herbalism? Uh but it was a very uh controversial topic. Uh it was a very controversial lecture. Um and and really kind of unheard of in the mainstream herbalist circles, you know, the herbalist you know, meetings and conventions and gatherings and um uh, she heard that uh, at that conference, and she said, "I've got a, I've got a place on the Caribbean side. I want you to come and, you know, take a look." And, um, you know, a few years later, we sat down and was like, "You know what? Let, let's look at this. Let's let's look at this Afrobotany thing and mm -hmm. see see where it takes us." And so, yeah, um, uh, we haven't had one since COVID, uh, but I was just looking at, I was just looking at. Uh, uh, the feasibility of of bringing that back and, and possibly bringing it to the states um uh next year so yeah i uh was looking at your website the sacred waters retreat website and uh i i'd seen the afro botany uh retreat and i actually had never heard of that until just recently so that's i mm. love that you're doing that i would be definitely interested to learn more about that as well well, you know what, Mason, when, when it, when we relaunch, I would love to have you there because it's be open great. for, it's open for everybody. You know, love that's it. a, that's a, that's a space where, you know, everybody needs to be infused uh, with indigenous knowledge. Um, again, we're co-creating community and these plants are our ancestors as well. And um, they're not just, they're not just here for a particular group of people. They're here for the healing of nations, as the Bible says. And so um, uh, we we have to be great stewards. We're you know it's it's funny that we can be humans can be humans take a platform. They take a platform for everything else besides other humans. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I really am steeped in the knowledge. And I really stay steadfast that um, plants can really bridge the gap, you know, of communities, of, of, of a race of people, of races of people, of cultures. Plants should, should be the tool, one of the tools to bring people together, right, to understand each other you know, in depth. And, and a lot of times, just like everything else, uh, in, what I've seen is that in the plant community, it's still a marginalized community you know they they still marginalize people of color within the herbalist community i'm just like please just give just, just give me a break just take a pause take a breath people and <laughs> just be okay don't be so intimidated by other people's knowledge don't be so intimidated it's it's not for intimidation it's to expand our awareness it's to expand the traje to the trajectory of our humanity so we can heal don't you want to heal <laughs> probably you know being a, a white dude uh, it's hard for me to see but you would think 
of all communities, the herbal community would be one of the more accepting and non-racist type of communities, but yeah, it's not. Uh, of course it exists everywhere. And I'm sure you've uh, experienced that firsthand. Um, I did read this event book, this event planning book one time. You may remember this. I was the event coordinator for Mountain Rose Herbs. So I was like always uh, um, reading different ways to help plan events uh, in a better way. And one of the suggestions this book said was, you know, you don't need to have a, a an event that appeals to everybody. Sometimes it's good to um, niche down and have an event where it's just for this type of particular person. I think you're totally allowed to create an herbal wellness event for women of color, right? Like, like well, that's what you were doing with the Sacred Waters Retreat. And uh, it's unfortunate that someone was berating you or thinking that you were encroaching on their territory when you just want to feel as if you could teach to a group of uh, like-minded people that are struggling with the same, you know, insecurities and and feeling the same type of a uh, type of way as, as you did. Um, I've seen pictures of the sacred waters retreat and it looks like you all have a fabulous time and um, it looks like an amazing event. And I'm like, dang, I guess I'll, I'll never get to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, the biggest thing about sacred waters Mason yeah. is that I, um, I knew I needed to create a safe space. Yeah. Just a quick break from the show to let you know about our sliding scale, ever expanding course called The Art of Frugal Nutrition. The goal of this course is to teach you how to eat nourishing foods on a budget. As I mentioned, it's a sliding scale and it even slides all the way down to free. And what's more frugal than free? We add new modules with highly esteemed herbalists and nutritionists every few months. So it continues to grow as with most projects here at Herb Rally. If you'd like to learn more and register, head to herbrally.com slash frugal nutrition. One more time, that's herbrally.com slash frugal nutrition. All right, now back to the show. Um, Because safety was an issue that I was finding was not present in the mainstream herbalist conferences. Um, it was very passive aggressive. The energy was always very passive aggressive. Um, um, it just was not safe. It just wasn't a safe place to be. Uh, I've I often and my husband would you know when I'd get home he would he you know he'd be like okay. <laughs> what happened? You know, what, what's the story? And, and usually generally the story was I did my lecture. I went to my room. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. At other herb conferences. Yeah. I did my lecture. I went to my room. Yeah. I ate. I went, and he would say, what? <laughs> Thousands of women there. And you didn't, you didn't interact. And, did, 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 did. and I was like, mm. well, you seem kind of shy Sabande. So. Well, <laughs> no, I'm not shy. No, no, but... no. <laughs> and that's hard too, you know, because um, first of all, I'm a Scorpio. Uh -huh. so I'm very outgoing. I always have been. Uh, uh, like I told you at the beginning, I'm a student of the arts. Uh, you know, I'm a performing arts graduate, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, from, from middle school up through high school. So um, I have a very outgoing personality. I have introverted moments, but a very outgoing personality. I, I've always been able to be around crowds and, you know, be okay. You know, I, I'm the person that could go into the room and talk to people. That's just who I am. And so these spaces, if I was just giving my lecture and going to my room, you can, you can just only imagine yeah. the uh, tension mm -hmm. um, that I had. Um, and so I would just say, you know, sometimes people would ask, why do you continue to go to these conferences if you know you're you're not welcome? And you know what I would say every time? There's going to be somebody there who is from a marginalized community. They may not recognize that they're marginalized, but they're going to hear something that I have to say, and it's going to resonate with them, and it's going to open a door for them. I'm there for that one person. Mm -hmm. And so I would... I would do it every time. It's like sticking a needle in your eye. I would do it. <laughs> I would do it every time, every time. And so, yeah, um, I'm thankful for the experience, though, because it um, it it built really deep resilience, um, and it allowed me to take my own power into my own hands. And like, you can't shut me down. You can't you can't take anything away from me that my ancestors haven't already given me. And if, and, 
and and look it took one woman from the shores of Sierra Leone which is my, my maternal side one woman one slave left the shores of Sierra Leone into the Gullah Islands the the, the low country if she made it if she made it if she made it from the belly of a ship through rapes no food language barriers never seeing her family again one woman and i'm here one it took one woman for be for me to be here so if she could do that then i don't have i don't have anything to complain about all i need to do is just focus on my path right and um do great work stay humble remain empathetic you know, see the visions uh, that that continue to be downloaded in me. I don't have any reason to not stand in power. And so I take that and I, I ride the wave of that, Mason. I ride it every day. Yeah, it's all about perspective and gratitude. And uh, it sounds like you got your head on straight. So I love hearing that. Um, it, did you want to keep a long road? Did you want to keep going? We're, we're about an hour. I'm, I'm good to keep I'm going. Good. Okay, cool. Let's let's keep rolling then because yeah, there's there's other questions I wanted to ask you too. So <laughs> um yeah, I, I love hearing your uh, optimism and and how you're focusing all of your creative energy through love and and uh yeah, just continue the work. So um I actually this is non-herbal related, but I was curious if you could kind of speak to this a little bit. You would um I'd seen on your Instagram account, I want to say you were teaching some sort of uh marriage or couples uh uh, advice, something, something or other like that. So I was just kind of curious if you had any sort of, um, advice for, uh, marriage and couples. <laughs> well, um, uh, this is new, but it's not new. So for years, um, uh, people have been asking, when are you and your husband gonna, when are you all gonna, going to do something like for, for couples now people always ask me when when the sacred waters get amends and i was like listen <laughs> listen 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 linda <laughs> i came through as a divine feminine yeah. and i i don't know anything <laughs> about the sacred masculine yeah <laughs> right so i can't come from that perspective um and then the questions became, well, what about, you know, what about you, you know, you and you and your husband work so well together, like we've watched, you know, we've watched you for the past 30 years, really weave uh, uh, a deep level of friendship, but then the support that the two of you have um, in your projects. And uh, we just put it off and put it off, put off Mason. And finally this year, uh, we could no longer put it off. And so we were like, you know what, we're going to do, um, we're going to do some things, uh, f you know, for couples, we're, we're going to begin to uh, facilitate uh, some sacred spaces for people who are um, in partnership. Right. And, and they're looking to uh, go deeper uh, to expand the knowledge of themselves and how that, you know, that intersects with the person that they're partnered up with, because it, it takes, it takes a great deal of balance, right. And understanding and compassion and empathy and uh, knowing, you know, it's kind of like, Ken, I, I got Kenny Rogers song in my head, knowing when to hold them, knowing when to fold them, right. <laughs> You've got to know. Right. And um, uh, so, yeah, we've reached this plateau where uh yeah, my 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 husband is he's 55 and um he's the you know he's the father of daughters he's he he will tell any man that he's learned so much about himself uh as a man just through the eyes of the women mm -hmm. and what a beautiful what a beautiful thing to realize within yourself you know as a man and to hear that uh you know come out of his mouth and all the things he's learned so uh yeah this year is our inaugural year of of really co-creating spaces um you know for people who are ready to really expand the way they're looking at their uh relationships so we're doing a lot of that over the years we've always done um we've always done commitment ceremonies uh, we've always done weddings and um, uh, uh, we've done, you know, rites of passage uh, things. So we've always been working 
you know, in that space together. But this year, we're really, we're really, you know, we said, okay, we're going to do something for a couple of six years. So that's, 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 that's how that came up. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see how that, we'll see how that takes, takes, you know, takes, takes off. That's exciting. Yeah. So Herb Rally is co-owned by me and Amanda, who's my wife. So I, yeah, we're, we we're in partnership and we're constantly, you know, working on, you know, a shared vision. So I kind of, mm-hmm. I think that's been, that been helpful to have like a, a similar goal to work towards something. So it's cool to hear that you're doing that with your husband. We uh, should do a, something. We should do great. something. Herb Rally, we should get together and, do, and <laughs> do something live where, you know what I mean? Where we, I'm, we, we sit and talk. See, we, you know, we ask some real questions. We, I love you know, it. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be very curious to hear what more ideas you had around that. That's, that's a really good idea. Uh, yeah, your husband looks like a cool guy. Like, um, yeah, I, I, I like seeing those pictures of you two on the Instagram. So, yeah, he's, he's a, he's a Libra. Oh, me too. Oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> he's a Libra, so um, he really brings a lot of um stability and and balance to my yeah. crazy wild. Side. you know um he's good at reeling me in when i go too far out into the cosmos uh but he does it with such tender loving care i always tell him uh and i believe this i, I believe this about libras my I, our oldest daughter is a libra i i believe this to be true um i think that you all are the best forms of humanity you're like the best you know like i yeah i really <laughs> i really 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 love uh, Libra people and what they um, have come to the planet to do. So yeah, your 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 wife she's lucky. <laughs> she's lucky like me. I'm pretty lucky too. Uh, I, I have to ask, uh, what's your husband's birthday? Uh, he's uh, October one. Okay, I'm October nineteenth. Okay, and, and my daughter's curious. the eighteenth. All right, right on. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, let's do a, let's do a couple more questions. Uh, okay. I don't know if I don't know if you saw this, but I was gonna um, pull a random question from this game that we got. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> and just get to know you a little better, and then I'll answer it too, and we'll see. Okay. Oh, uh, what was the best art project you've ever made? Art project. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And I could draw another card too if if that doesn't resonate. Well, I guess it really d- d- goes to the question of what, how do we define art? True. Oh uh, well, the best art project I've ever made are my children. Oof, good good answer. I didn't think of that one. <laughs> my children, all little three versions of myself, <laughs> um, but better. Yeah, that's the, that's the greatest art project I've ever made. Oh, yeah, there's so much uh, love and creativity that goes into those little things. So uh, oh. I've got a daughter, too. So, I, yeah, I can relate. <laughs> Are you, do you just have one child? Yeah, just the one for now, okay. at least. Yeah. How, how old is she? She's 11. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. She's so... <laughs> <laughs> mm, this is an interesting time for you daddy she's a uh, it's it's been cool to watch because this past year or so she's been getting into like going thrift shopping for clothes i never thought i'd see her into remotely into style and stuff but mm. here we are and she's buying these like you know vintage sweaters and stuff like that oh, so it's pretty it's nice. pretty fun yeah <laughs> that's nice she's gonna teach you so much about yourself Oh, and she already has. And uh, you were talking about your husband having a relationship with daughters, you know, Um, I've always struggled with, say, like, I never had a sister. And um, uh, so like, um, and, you know, relationship with the the mom side is always interesting. But like, um, it's been nice to have that feminine energy in my life uh, since she was born. And she's really taught me a lot and showed me a lot of just, you know, that unconditional love. So that's good. My husband says that too. Uh, the girls, they talk to him about when I say everything from sex (laughs) to, to, I mean, everything they will, there's no question that they are fearful of talking to their dad. That's he did a good job then. Well, you did too, but you know what I mean? So he made it comfortable for them to go to him about that stuff. So that's, yeah, really good to hear yeah um very good well thanks for sharing and uh why don't we uh why don't we do let's see here is there anything else that you wanted to cover uh for sure for sure or no you you can you can hit me with your best awesome. shot all right uh well then we'll end it on uh what's your favorite part of being an herbalist hmm I 
I don't know if I have a favorite part, but I'll say that I am um, deeply grateful uh, to the plants for um, their messages. Uh, plantain and cotton are my ally plants. Um, and so I am deeply grateful that they continue to show up uh, in ways in my life that are so deeply moving and um, they they have a vibration that heals me in in a capacity that it has been unfathomable. Um, so I am humble. I'm a humble carrier of, of the plant medicine. Um, I am a priestess of the plant medicine. Um, I'm a steward of the plant medicine. And so I just have a deep level of gratitude for all that they continue to help me within my life, um, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, they just continue to e help me evolve at, you know, as a human. And I think that's the best part of, uh, of, of being, uh, an herbalist. <laughs> um, I really don't like to call myself herbalist. I mean, you know, I do what I do because it's in me yeah. and it, it, it resonates from my heart and and not from my mind and um i can't imagine doing anything else mason so I, it's been the greatest gift uh to me and um at this point with five grandchildren um i'm i'm now the granny i'm now <laughs> i'm now my grandmother i am now my grandmother i love that and so i'm teaching my babies um the magic. Mm. Um, I'm teaching them to be still in nature. I'm teaching them to watch the birds and <laughs> um, talk to the chipmunks. I'm, te I'm teaching them to, um, uh, to hold a leaf and talk to the leaf. I'm teaching them to pick up the stick and know that the stick, you know, has a mother. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching them the magic, the things that my granny told me to do i'm now in her shoes and i'm i'm doing that so i think that would probably be my my uh the, the, my greatest you know my greatest joy of 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 being in this field i love it yeah your your grandkids are so lucky to have you and um i'm so honored that we finally got to meet and hang out and uh thank you for sharing your story and uh i'm just yeah i'm just really uh grateful to get to spend this time with you i'm I'm actually already thinking, dang, Sabande, I want to do a round two with you. <laughs> like, okay, just let me know. Let me okay. know. Let me know anytime, Mason. Anytime. Listen, I um, yeah. it's not often. It's not often that we, and I say we, marginalized people. It's not often that we really have allies in our corner, and um you've really hung in with, 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 with me from the start, uh, you know, um, when you jumped on board with Sacred Waters. And um, that says a lot um, about who you are, not who you work for. <laughs> it does. It says a lot about who you are and not who you work for. And um, uh, I, I, I bow in deep gratitude, uh, you know, in, in, for thanking you for, you know, I, I thank you for, for really believing in what I'm doing for the masses, uh, because it is making a difference. It is, it is making a difference. If you could see the results of what Sacred Waters does for the women of color who come, the, 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 uh, the ability for them to just be able to reconnect to a source that they didn't even uh, understand was already there, uh, the magic, the plants, all of that stuff is already there. Uh, but because of whatever it is that they've been through as a marginalized society, um, they haven't had time. That's, you know, uh, herbalism sometimes is just a hobby. Uh, you know, <laughs> for uh, sure, <laughs> it, it's a hobby. Yeah, um, I didn't grow up with anybody of color 
yeah. who said, I'm an herbalist and this is what I'm doing for a living. Right, you, right. That, <laughs> that wasn't happening. Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, um, every space that I showed up uh, to uh, in the herbalist world was always white um, and it was always a hobby. Or they were doing it for a living. Right. right. But but I knew that. Well, gosh, I didn't I didn't have the pleasure of that. I wasn't gifted that. Uh, but what I was gifted was, uh, with was a lot of knowledge. And so, you know, the challenge always became what are you going to do with the knowledge Sabande how are you gonna how are you gonna make it count so thank you so much Mason again for um uh believing enough in the vision and supporting the dream of sacred waters um we could not we could not we could not do it with, we could not do it without uh allies like you so I, I really bow uh, deep gratitude to you I'll, I'll always be an ally I'll always be a fan uh I'll always support people of color er herbalist work like um I I'm honestly like I I don't know if this is inappropriate to say or whatever but I I feel like I grew up without food music and culture uh, mm. so, so uh so okay New Orleans have, has always kind of been my favorite city because I feel like it's infused it is food music and culture into my my soul and my spirit and so um obviously a large part of that is uh, the African American culture there, and uh, so I have a very fond spot in my heart for for that. And um, that's good. Um, yeah, I um, I got to meet Leah Chase. I don't know if you know who that is yes. or not. Yeah, so like I, that was just like a great dream come true. <laughs> so um, I I love her, and um, yeah, so always always down to support. And I, I don't want to give you full credit, but I'm definitely saying you probably laid the foundation for a lot of the things that are happening, and you know people of color herbalism right now, like, um, Lucretia Van Dyke, you know, she wrote a book and again, like she, you know, you're, you're helping pave the way for, um, you know, this, this, uh, oh, thank this you. scene. And, um, I love seeing it. And I'm actually, uh, I was just emailing back and forth with, uh, a, a, a podcast called the petty herbalist. I don't know if you've heard of them, no. but, um, uh, it's, it's hosted by two, um, black women so um that's it, good i've listened to a few episodes and it's awesome so anyways i just wanted to say always a fan always an ally and um yeah thanks for the kind words oh thank you thank yeah. you so so <laughs> very much uh I, i'll continue to blaze this trail um mm -hmm. as my ancestors have it's so good to see you know i think covid covid really i've seen a i've seen a there are so many black herbalists coming out. <laughs> i was like oh Love my gosh yeah, I love to see it. I was like, where I would, ooh, ooh, we, if you all, if I, I all often say, if, if they only knew um, what it took to get, to get here, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm proud of this millennial generation who, you know, of, of, of BIPOC herbalists who are just taking charge of their own uh, lives and they don't care. They're just like, I'm going to be seen and I'm going to be heard. So that's a good thing. That. Very good. Well, cool. Thanks again, uh, Sabande. And uh, we'll see y'all on the next episode of the Herbalist Hour. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the Herb Rally podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us here at Herb Rally, we now have a text message community, believe it or not. Basically, it's just updates from us. We send about one to seven texts per week, uh, notifying you about new events, videos, courses, podcasts. You get the idea. It's pretty much like our email newsletter, just in text form. So if you'd like to receive text messages from Herb Rally, just text JOIN, that's J-O-I-N, to the number 541-256-2895. Again, that's JOIN to number 541-256-2895. And to stop receiving text, that's easy too. Just text STOP to the same number. It'll opt you out immediately. Okay, thanks again for listening. Have a great rest of your day.